you can jump directly to each chapter by clicking on the times shown in the YouTube description. This is what the parts of your kit should look like so far. There are these 12 painted parts, your collection of the remaining smaller components, the polished wooden base, the bag containing the three parts made of copper rod, the bag containing the acrylic tube and rod, the seven painted spacers, minute hand spindle, pressure cylinder and its connector, and the cleaned laser engravings, clock hands and red gem. First of all we are going to prepare the clock movement. Once the chronograph is assembled it's difficult to remove a flat battery so we're going to fix on a piece of ribbon that makes battery removal really easy. Remove the masking tape or similar from over the battery holder. Find the length of ribbon and peel off the double-sided tape backing. Line up the ribbon as shown so that it doesn't stick up and get in the way of the pendulum. Firmly smooth it down to ensure good adhesion. When you do finally insert a battery, the ribbon can be pulled to help remove it from within the chronograph. For now, tuck the free end of the ribbon under the pendulum to keep it out of the way. Now we are going to fix the ball chain pulley onto the rear gear cutout. A pair of pliers will be required. Find the rear gear cutout and the painted pulley. You'll also need the M3 countersunk brass screw and M3 brass nut from the fixings collection. Place the screw into the rear of the pulley. Then place it through its fixing hole and screw on the brass nut finger tight. Holding the screw head to stop it turning, tighten the brass nut a little with your pliers. Don't over tighten it as the plastic could crack. Now to attach the clock movement to the rear gear cutout. A pair of pliers will be required. Pull off the masking tape or similar from the clock movement spindle. And remove the brass nut and washer. Place the rear gear cutout over the clock movement as shown. Replace the brass washer and nut and rotate the clock movement so it lines up vertically with the rear gear cutout. Then tighten the brass nut firmly with your pliers. Again, don't over tighten it, it just needs to stop the clock movement from rotating. Your rear gear cutout should now look like this. Now to fix the minute hand to its spindle. I would recommend using super glue, but you could use an alternative. Find the minute hand amongst the cleaned engravings and the minute hand spindle. It's slightly smaller than the clock spacers. 
Check you have the correct part and that it is the right way round by pushing it onto the clock movement spindle. You will be gluing the minute hand onto the loose end so remember which is which. If the loose end has got painted, use the wet and dry to remove any paint to ensure good adhesion. This is what it should look like once glued. With the minute hand's black side facing downwards, apply a little super glue around the loose end of the minute hand spindle and lower it onto the minute hand, lining it up with the centre. Leave the glue to set, 30 seconds should be sufficient if using super glue. Check that your completed minute hand pushes onto the clock movement as shown. Then store it somewhere safe. Now to assemble the side gears, clock spring and clock spring support. Again, I would suggest using super glue, although you could use an appropriate alternative. Find the painted side gears, the painted clock spring, and the painted clock spring support. You'll also need the two larger spaces from the fixings collection. These are the five parts you'll need. Apply a few small drops of superglue around one side of a spacer. Something like this. and place it onto the central side gear post as shown. Then place a few small drops of super glue onto the glued down spacer. And lower on the clock spring. Make sure it lines up with both posts as shown. Now repeat the process with the second spacer. Using a few small drips of superglue to glue it onto the clock spring. Place a few more drops onto the spacer and lower on the clock spring support. Again, make sure it lines up with both posts as shown. Leave the glue to set. If using super glue, this should take about a minute. Your completed side gear assembly should look like this. Now it's time to fix the hour numbers onto the hour display gear. Again, I'd recommend superglue as it is very thin and will be drawn between surfaces by capillary action. Find the painted hour display gear, and the 12 cleaned hour engravings. Their shape means each engraving is easy to line up. Start with number 1. It doesn't matter where it is placed around the hour display gear. Hold it in place and rotate the hour display gear so you can see its back. Place three drops of super glue around the hole as shown. Ensure the drops do touch both the engraving and the hour display dial so they are drawn into the joint. 
Whilst holding the number in place, carefully rest the hour display gear on a flat surface while the glue sets, probably about a minute for super glue. Repeat the process, ensuring the numbers are arranged clockwise as they normally are on a clock face. If a number doesn't sit flush, use a scalpel or similar to remove any excess plastic before gluing it into place. Take care when you come to number 6 that you don't mix up 6 and 9. The finished hour display gear should look like this. The chronograph's pendulum is modelled on a mercury compensated pendulum, which was an amazing invention. Don't get me started. Mercury is a very toxic metal, so we need to make a safe column of mercury. A pair of scissors will be required for this part of the assembly. Find the bag containing the acrylic rod and tube. Remove the rod from the tube. and place the tube back in the bag to protect it from scratches. You'll also need the strip of aluminium tape from your collection of parts. You may be wondering about using metallic silver paint to create the mercury. Don't be tempted. Even when dry the paint is easily marked with fingerprints and leaves marks on the inside of the acrylic tube. It's not worth the frustration, I speak from experience. Aluminium tape is immeasurably better. Peel the protective film off the rod. And, using the wet and dry abrasive paper, sand a meniscus around one end of the rod. Mercury likes sticking to itself rather than glass, so it does have quite a large curved top when in a tube. Your finished meniscus should look something like this. Check you have the tape the right way round. It's 56mm long, as shown. And measure and mark out a line 22mm parallel to the edge of the aluminium tape. Carefully cut along the line, keep the remaining tape as there's enough for a second try if it goes wrong. Peel a little of the tape's backing off along its length, as shown. Now line up the tape so it extends equally past each end of the rod. Also try and line up the edge of the tape so it is in line with the rod as shown. Once it's lined up, gently flatten the tape against the rod, removing the backing until the tape has been wrapped completely around the rod. On the end without the meniscus, use a pair of scissors to remove the excess tape. Holding the rod parallel to a hard surface, firmly roll it backwards and forwards while slowly raising it to the vertical position. Don't raise it too quickly as the tape will crinkle. It should end up looking something like this. The slightly mottled look actually mimics real mercury, as with age, impurities collect on its surface. Any slight ridges in the tape can usually be completely flattened by rubbing the back of a fingernail over them. Your completed column of mercury should look something like this. Hopefully this part of the kit will also be useful in helping you to create other amazing inventions that feature columns of mercury. Now to assemble the pendulum. 
As always, I'd recommend using super glue as it's easily drawn into the small gaps between parts. Find the painted pendulum top and bottom. You'll also need the two straight rods from the copper rod parts bag. And the acrylic tube from its bag, take care not to scratch its surface. These are the six parts you'll need. Firstly, we are going to glue the mercury column into the bottom of the pendulum. Line it up and check that you have the join in the aluminium tape facing towards the back of the pendulum where it won't be seen and your meniscus facing upwards. Place a little glue into the bottom of the pendulum as shown. And push the mercury column into place. Then push the acrylic tube over the column and into the bottom of the pendulum. We don't want to glue this in yet, we just want to use the tube to ensure the mercury column lines up vertically whilst the glue sets. Find something convenient to sit the bottom of the pendulum on whilst the glue sets. A couple of books would do. Five minutes should be enough if using super glue, as thicker layers of super glue take longer to set. Once the glue has set, the acrylic tube can be removed to re-stick or clean up the mercury column if necessary. If everything is OK, carefully insert the copper rods into the holes on either side of the base. Then line up the copper rods and acrylic tube with the top of the pendulum and firmly push the top and bottom together. Check the top and bottom look parallel and that the engravings face towards the front. Then lay the pendulum on a flat surface and rotate it from side to side to ensure the top and bottom are lined up along the tube. When you are happy everything is lined up, place a single drop of superglue into the bottom hole and the top hole. Don't be tempted to use more than one drop as the glue could then run into the acrylic tube. Leave the pendulum for about five minutes to ensure the superglue has set and your mercury compensated pendulum should look like this. Now to assemble the front of the chronograph. As always, I'd recommend using super glue, although you could use a suitable alternative. Find the painted minutes panel, the engraved minutes display, the red gem, and the two small copper rivets from your parts collection. Position the gem into the engraved rebate on the minutes panel. Holding it in place, apply a couple of small drops of superglue to the back of the gem where it touches the minutes panel. The superglue will flow in and stick it really well. Let the glue set for about five minutes as drops of superglue take longer to set. Roughly line up the minute display over the hole in the minutes panel. Place the two copper rivets in their holes. This will properly line up the engraved minute display. Holding the rivets in place, rotate the panel so it's sitting face down on a flat surface. Firmly push it down against the table to ensure the rivets are pushed all the way in. Apply a drop of superglue to the back of each rivet. Capillary action will draw it into the joints. After a few seconds, wipe off any excess glue with a tissue. Leave the glue to set for a couple of minutes to ensure good adhesion. To ensure the minute dial is attached firmly, place some small drops of superglue on the back of the panel where it meets the engraved minute dial. These will be drawn in and ensure good adhesion. Your finished minutes panel should look like this.
Finally in this section we're going to attach the pressure cylinder connector to the pressure cylinder. As always I'd recommend using super glue. Find the painted pressure cylinder and handle it gently as sometimes the copper paint is susceptible to fingerprints. Find the pressure cylinder connector. Apply some super glue around the inside of the connector and push it firmly onto the pressure cylinder. I'd hold the cylinder in some soft tissue or cloth to avoid the risk of leaving fingerprints. I do speak from experience. If fingerprints or other blemishes do appear, you can always sand the surface smooth with the wet and dry paper and repaint it. Allow the glue to set. And your completed pressure cylinder should look like this. Well done! I hope you now have a really exciting collection of semi-assembled parts ready for final assembly in the next video.